Hori Paharis, joined by Roland once again, my co-host. Sponsored. This episode is sponsored by Diplomacy Clothing. Negotiate with style, and now you can be safe when you negotiate with style. Because they have brand new face masks, washable cloths for reuse. They're perfect for this COVID-19 situation going on. So if you don't have a mask yet, hit up Diplomacy Clothing on Instagram, at Diplomacy Clothing. Get yourself a face mask. Be safe. And please, please, please be safe. If you, even if you don't have gloves, just make sure you hit up Diplomacy Clothing for those new face masks. Yes, sir. You already know. Shout out to Diplomacy for rocking with us. And let's let's get into this. So, th- this week we've been talking a lot about the WWE, and and, and to save face, they uh, they made some they made some decisions. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. So, in, in the XFL video that uh, YouTube and Spotify listeners can click in the eye above my head, or if you're on Spotify, you can click the link there. Uh, we discussed how Vince McMahon really went in, went all in on uh, the XFL, using most of his money, most of the WWE stock money, and just pretty much, we had a free season, basically, of the XFL. No TV deals, it was pretty much... Just here's the XFL. If you love it, then we're signing on for a, a TV deal. And then Fox signed on with SmackDown beforehand, which caused the whole uh, of money. Deal. Yes. So mm-hmm. Fox gave a ton of money to WWE for SmackDown. USA Network, obviously, with Raw. So a lot of TV deals were taking place. Not only that, but we also had All Elite Wrestling. And they were on the come up. They were having damn near 1 million viewers every week. And easily pretty much caused WWE to bring NXT to TV, right? This is all a preface to prepare you for what I'm about to what? say. Yeah. So because there's a new promotion out there, like All Elite Wrestling, that is just bringing in all these disgruntled fans and superstars, WWE got some cold feet and said, we got to sign some dudes just to make sure they stay with us and don't, and don't go to the, to the competition and bring in viewers there and, and succeed. Because quite frankly, WWE has a lot of talent that they're not using. And they're they're on some they're on main event, which is not even on TV. It's on the network. TV, no. No one yeah. watches main event really. So it's really just like a demotion when you think about Essentially. it. Essentially. Essentially. they're paying these, these talent a ton of money just so they, they stay and don't go to All Elite Wrestling or New Japan or wherever. What ended up happening this week is that WWE decided to make a flurry of releases. So just, just going to read off the list right now. Okay. WWE.com wrote that they have come to terms on the release of Kurt Angle, Rusev, Drake Maverick, Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, Heath Slater, Eric Young, Rowan, Sarah Logan, no Way Jose, Mike Chioda, the referee, mm-hmm. <laughs> Mike Kanellis, Maria Kanellis, EC3, Aiden English, Leo Rush, Primo, and Epico, and that's just from the updated from WWE. Yeah, Th- this yeah there was a couple more names. Mm-hmm. There was also, yeah. I believe uh, Pro Wrestling Sheet is, I think they're the ones that tweeted out that this is just the beginning. Oh, for sure. A lot, a lot more backstage uh, firings that took place. This is just the the, the superstars for, that that are in the ring putting on the performance or la- didn't put on a performance. Because quite frankly, I mean, J- Drake Maverick wasn't really on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, I mean live, the, the five live guy. The first two names you listed were kind of the like the real heavy hitters, you know, the, 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 the headlines. And and we we knew for a while that Rusev has been wanting out. I mean, his wife Lana. Has re-upped on a five-year deal, but he's been wanting to get out for a hot minute. Kurt mm-hmm. Angle, I mean, he hasn't really done much 
outside of backstage things since his WrestleMania appearance last year. Yeah, he retired. which is what uh, I think that what he agreed mm-hmm. upon. I think the WrestleMania match was supposed to be his last match, so that's understandable. But then you look at all these guys like Eric Young. What a what a waste uh, of time Eric Young had at WWE. Um, he had a great time. EC three, EC three, uh, No Way Jose. Mike Kyoto is the most shocking one of me out of this one. I mean, he's a longtime veteran but, referee. Yeah. I definitely see him going to AEW. I mean, some of these ma- names apparently, uh, especially the NXT stars that are getting released as well. A lot of NXT stars are getting cut too. But mm-hmm. this this initial list is really a bunch of guys like Luke Owls and Carl Anderson. Oh, automatically you're gonna th- automatically automatically, automatically. You, you think they got jobs. They got jobs. Don't worry, people. They got jobs. Automatically, you know that AEW is an option because of Bullet Club. But then you remember that uh, WWE Japan. re-upped them for mm-hmm. uh, half a million dollars, so they oh. don't go to AEW. AEW, yeah. And this whole coronavirus situation, I mean, Florida just deemed WWE an essential business. Huh. So now... Which is funny, which is funny because that video, that, that news kind of came out after our last video. So <laughs> pretty funny how that worked out. So, for Spotify listeners, you get an exclusive look at that. Sorry, YouTube, we got to keep up with the times. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I mean, for, for wrestling to be an essential business now, that's... I, and there's a whole story about that with Linda McMahon, who obviously was the, the head of the Department of Small Businesses for the yeah. Trump administration. She's not, she's no, She no longer holds that position right now, but... No, no. I mean, people forget that Donald Trump's in the WWE Hall of Fame. And, oh yeah, and him and, yeah. and him and the McMahons are tight as hell. They're they're boys. They're they're as close as we are, basically. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I don't think they're that close. But they're, they're close. <laughs> but but you look sure. you look at you look at what what happened with the McMahons, where uh, Governor Rick Santis said that, and the mayor and the chef, the the, the sheriff's department over in Orlando and in Orange County, that are like, WWE is not an essential business. Wrestling is not an essential business. You need to stop what yes. you're doing. Yeah. And then Linda McMahon starts a super pact for Donald Trump and then puts in $18 million to Orange County, which is where the performance center is at. And then you look at Vince McMahon getting cold feet a week ago on on April 9th about the worry that the USA Network, the NBC that owns USA Network and Fox could substantially cut the amount of money. That Vince McMahon and WWE would be getting from getting the TV for, deal yeah, for, for the lack of shows. Mm-hmm. So then it's all, and honestly, when I when I heard that, it's like everyone, all the networks know that there's a lack of content right now when it comes to sports or entertainment. So I don't sure. think, although Dave Meltzer said that it's very likely that they might have restructured the contract to pay WWE less, I don't think it would have been substantially less that would that would warrant any type of worry. That being said, mm-hmm. though, Vince McMahon did change his mind last Friday in saying that now they're going to start recording live Raw, SmackDown, and NXT three times a week. They're going to start recording live, yeah. which is getting ridiculous. Back to it. Yeah, they're getting back ridiculous. to it. Ridiculous. When you look at, eight, again, All Elite Wrestling, they, they taped two months, two months worth of content within like a week. So they're good for April and May. Now, come end of May, they already M- MGM Arena, uh, MGM Resorts already canceled Double or Nothing. So, granted, Double yeah. or Nothing might yeah. might get pre-recorded or or, rec- or recorded late. There's they're saying it might still um it might still go on live as a pay-per-view. But now that WWE pretty much paid their way into forcing themselves as an essential business, which now the whole country. Is saying what the fuck is an essential business? <laughs> if WW, if wrestling is an essential business, then and and now you're getting all these words about uh, UFC. Dana White is apparently talking to Vince McMahon <coughs> about hosting uh, UFC fights in the Performance Center. So we're gonna have WWE the hosting Center. the Octagon, and now obviously um, Jacksonville. Can you imagine? Jacksonville is the home base for all Elite wrestling. So now Florida deems wrestling an essential service, which means all elite wrestling could potentially uh, host all their events in their Jacksonville center. 
but the the most the most egregious thing is that all you wrestling when they say to their wrestlers you don't have to participate in any of the events in any recordings if you want to stay home stay home we're not forcing you to come in mm-hmm. i believe them when vince mcmahon says you yeah. don't have to yeah, come sure. in i don't buy that for a second and now he's going and now nope. he's definitely nope. going to force nope. people who have families who have kids who probably have relatives that are immunocompromised, people that are expecting kids at any time soon to leave their families and come possibly get exposed three times a week, one or multiple times a week just to record live, just to go back home, then to fly back. It's, it's a whole mess. And then if you don't have a family and you're single or you have a roommate that's in the business, then you, you're just quarantining yourself that entire week and only leaving to record that one live episode of Raw or SmackDown or NXT. And then the whole thing, the whole thing with these releases is that this is basically a safe face measure because the quarter meetings of the stockholders is coming up and Vince McMahon has to explain to them why WrestleMania didn't make as much money as it's supposed to. Why all the all mm-hmm. the attendance money is gone. Why the merch is down. Why merch money is down. And you look at all these co- all these all these moves, these releases of these of these wrestlers that I just said earlier in the episode. That these guys had big money deals that WWE themselves signed them to. So it's like it's like it for for non wrestling fans. It's like if if you sign Kirk Cousins to a fully guaranteed deal to make sure he doesn't go to the Jets, and then a year in to Kirk Cousins, or not even a year in six months into Kirk Cousins' fully guaranteed deal, you cut him because oh well you know he didn't, we didn't qualify for the playoffs. So six months in, well you know what fuck you Kirk, we're done. Go go with the Jets. You still owe him the fully guaranteed money. You put yourself money, in a financial yeah. hole and ju- just to make sure this person doesn't go somewhere else. And now because you're cap strapped, because you're, you're desperate. And apparently from what W from, from what multiple sources are saying is that WWE did not need to release all these guys. They had, they, they were, they, they were financially, they were fine. They were fine financially, but because they wanted yeah. to show the stockholders mm-hmm. and bring faith back into the, into wall street, that the XFL failure was was a fluke. That all the money, three hundred million dollars, Vince McMahon invested, that came from his own pocket and the stockholders' pocket, what was a fluke? It didn't mean anything. He saw, he releases all these people, plus some writers, plus some referees, plus some backstage crew, just to show the stockholders, hey, yeah, look, look at how much money we saved. We saved all this money. And we're gonna keep saving all this money because we're gonna fire some people, and make and look look at the profit we made. Look, we're fine. We're okay. And I said this in the Spotify exclusive episode, but I truly think this is this is uh, I'm justified in saying this again for YouTube viewers. This is the this is the beginning of yeah, the end for WWE. Yeah. This is this is worse than WCW 2000. This is a company that is greedy that does not give a damn about its it, it, the well-being of their employees and just all only Clearly. cares about the money. Yeah, and um, to touch a little bit on what you were just saying about the on multiple reports, I was I believe it was Seth Rollins who actually came out and said like in an IG live video or something that some of these cuts are like not permanent that they're being done for now. But these people can be rehired back as soon as the whole thing's over. But I w- to to get to the wrestling side of things here, um, if you're a Carl Anderson and you spent what, four years, five years with the WWE, not doing much of really anything, basically almost ruining the credibility that you and Luke Ellis had piled up before the signing with the company, and to your point, getting that massive deal, but for what cause? I think the performers will much rather cut back and pay to actually perform. And so when I heard Seth Rollins say that, I was just like, are they going to want to go back? Because if you if you know, 
like AEW skin their tag division going, they can use a Bullet Club or, or what you know whatever they want to go by when they actually sign, or even if they want to go back to New Japan where it all started for them, you know. I think there's more options out there for them, and that's just you know those two alone. They're ECWs. You got the Great Mavericks and other people who kind of go off and do other things. And I'm like, why would you want to go back to the company who is showing everybody that they don't care about their well-being? You know, they don't care about what you or your family is going through. All they care about is putting on shows so Vince McMahon can make more money, so he can pay the 500 something superstars. Backstage employees and referees that he signed just to keep away from going to the, the rival companies. No, and definitely, um, I, I could see a lot of them just not coming back. I mean, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, like you mentioned, they definitely can go back to New Japan. They definitely have the option to go to uh, TNT and All Elite Wrestling. But uh, I, I go back to what Braun Strowman said in his tweet that went viral for the wrong reasons a few a, a few weeks ago, where he said. He doesn't like. I don't. I, I don't have the tweet right in front of me, but he for. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna paraphrase and say that basically he said that. He uh that the indie wrestlers should just learn how to be a proper businessman, and learn to save up for their uh for, for their families and provide for their families. How he has to fight to provide for his families, and it's like, dude, I'm sorry, like you didn't go through NXT, you didn't even go through OVW or FCW. Oh. You came straight to the main roster, was put into the Y family. Already, you have a couple hundred thousand dollars in your pocket right there. And, and let's and let's not forget when he got first got to the the big time. The, the running joke was the man can't wrestle. You know, like, he was almost a hazard to be in a ring with. See, he was limited to literally the same three moves he does now with the same three moves he was doing then. So not like he was really fighting for anything. The man we all know loves tall guys. He loves the muscular guys. So long as you're tall and muscular, you're going to be put in a position to succeed. So, I mean, the, what's, what's this bro fighting to save thing that he's speaking about? He, he knows nothing about that. Yeah, and Seth Rollins has been guilty of, of that providing for your family type of tweeting against indie wrestling like for forever. Ever since he, he turned he turned heel and try, tried to be the face of the company. Uh, it's, 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 well, it's, well, it's poorly uh, thought out. Uh, very ill-informed, and just just to update, like there's also been NXT releases: Diana Perazzo, Alexander, Josiah Williams, who's supposed to be yeah. one, one of the key music uh, contributors to NXT. Dorian Mack, MJ Jenkins, Alyssa Marino, and the and the list is gonna go on. Especially when you think about back, yeah, yeah. backstage. You remember uh, Fit Finley, uh, Lance Storm, he's also, they're both gone. gone. A lot of people are are just getting out, and sure, maybe Finley could come back to WWE, like you said. Like, some guys can come back, Seth Rollins said. Some of them can come back, but granted, for for the writers, the wrestlers, I mean, they fired the writer that made the most interesting storyline in 2020, which is the... Uh, Otis and Mandy Rose storyline. That was the one thing that kept people going for for SmackDown, especially because the Fiend was already buried because of the match against Seth Rollins and losing to Goldberg yeah. for the Universal Title. Yeah. So the Fiend is already out as an interest for SmackDown. Roman Reigns, I mean, mm-hmm. he was in a in a feud for Bar- with Baron Corbin since they moved to Fox, so no one cared about that. That got boring very yeah. fast, and it, it, there was really no other story except for Otis and Mandy Rose and Ziggler. So, you fire that person, sure, maybe you can come back, but what's stopping an Impact Wrestling from signing them? What's stopping Ring of Honor from signing? It'd be a great signing. And you look at what mm-hmm. the other wrestling promotions around the world are doing. I mean, Ring of Honor—they're not showing any any content right now, unlike WWE or All no. Wrestling. They're not showing, they're not filming, they're not doing anything. But what they're doing is that they're saying, we're going to pay our athletes, our wrestlers, for all the episodes that they missed. So if they were supposed to have missed. a show on Tuesday, yeah. we're going to pay you for that show on Tuesday. If we're supposed to record on, on, on Thursday, we're going to pay you for that recording. In Japan, all but the they... big promotions in, in, in Japan, all the big wrestling promotions just came together and started a fund to make sure that their wrestlers... 
even even if they don't wrestle at all or or whatever is the case or if they test a positive or whatever they that there's yeah. a fund so they can go into and make sure that they're stable and ha- are able to go out and buy food and pay rent pay utilities whatever it is yeah so there's yeah. you don't see any of that from wwe instead no and the... go on Oh no! I was going to. I was just going to check and down in here. Um, I was just going to say that the shows though at the like the difference from Vince McMahon and the rest of these higher ups. You know, the rest of them really wanted to make sure that their wrestlers are taken care of. And I wouldn't be shocked if ROH was almost a fully guaranteed deal, anyways, because they have to find a way to keep some of these you know wrestlers on their roster. And I mean, a fully guaranteed contracts would probably be the best way to do that. So, I mean, but even then, the fact that you're seeing them, you know, take the initiative and not being, to- have to be told, hey, you, you guys aren't a central business or, you know, them trying to fight to be in a central business. They're just like, hey, there's craziness going on in the world. Stay home, stay safe, take care of you and your family. And, you know, they're going to get paid regardless for it. And that's something I don't think you will ever see this man going to do unless absolutely forced. And I mean, we can go on and on when it comes to this man because he's just an overall interesting character. But I just think that there could be a lot more yeah. that he could do on his part to kind of help better the situation. And these firing is almost like band aids, you know, that's not really fixing your problem, you know, because like you said, they still got the, all the guaranteed money that are in those bills, they still got to pay it, you know. So, you're, you're well, how much money are you really saving? And, and just I'm just looking at a wrestling observer right now they had another massive layoffs just talking about the, the producers at this point I mentioned Landstorm Billy Kidman Mike Rotunda Dave Fit Finley Pat Buck Sean Devari Scott Scott Armstrong Sarah Stock Shane aka Gregory Helms they were put on furlough mm-hmm. so furlough for those people that uh, don't have a dictionary right next to them basically just means that there, it's a, it's basically another word for a leave of absence. So technically, yeah. they are yes terminated, but they can come. The WWE can have them come back if necessary. But that's that's and just the producer. Believe Gregory, yeah. mm-hmm. I believe Gregory. Just chime in real quick. Yeah. I believe Gregory Helms put a tweet saying something about that. And um, best of luck to you know, like you said, all the people. But continue, continue. Yeah, but it, it but. Like I said, all of this is just an, an effort to just improve cash flow because right now the economy is bad. There's no secret. But around this time, post-WrestleMania, they or in the next coming months, there's supposed to be a Saudi Arabia trip. Because for over the last two, three years, WWE, whether politics or not, or whatever you can say negative about or truthfully about uh, Saudi Arabia, about the situation over there, WWE decides... To still have shows there. And of course we're talking about Crown Jewel. Super Showdown. And Saudi Arabia Super pays showdown. a ton of money to WWE to host these shows. That's to host these shows. Yeah. That's not going to happen this no. quarter. That's not going to happen this year. So that influx of money is going to look bad. So I don't know how much money this is going to save WWE. Compared to what Saudi Arabia will pay. But just the, the rumors like going into the months leading into the XFL. Where there was a, a, a lawsuit even from a stockholder of WWE because he was upset that W that Vince you put two and two together he saw that Vince is taking all these stocks funding the XFL now the XFL is folded and there was a lawsuit I believe it was dropped very recently like or, like before, around before the coronavirus mm-hmm. uh, began to spread yeah, yeah. But, but still the stockholders are starting to take notice. WWE could lose most of their stockholders, really, if a lot of them could back out and say, we, we, we're we not dumb, we see what you're doing, like, just because you, there's a, a net profit right now because you cut half of your roster, half of your talent, then that doesn't mean that the t- the on-screen, on-screen product is going to be okay. And then you t- think about, what, what I just found this out today, uh, Ringside Charlie apparently is a super fan who's always ringside at every WrestleMania. They even at they were considering having WrestleMania with some fans, and we're gonna bring in that this Charlie guy, 
as a way of like, oh, look, we love our, our fans love us so much. They, they fight through the coronavirus to see WrestleMania type, that kind of propaganda, basically. And obviously the state of Florida at the time said, no, you can't, you can't have any of that. Yeah. No limit. <laughs> yeah, that's, but that's a bad marketing. And it's, it, it's just, it's just sickening to see that all these layoffs, the furloughs are, are just, just ways to save money for this quarter and to save face. Because you dare any, you, you dare an NFL, an NBA, any other any other sport league because it, this isn't something a sports league would ever do. No one would compromise no, the no. health of their of their of their athletes because at this point, yes, wrestlers can be they, they, they can be considered athletes. No one no one would would threaten the safety of their athletes. No one would threaten the safety of their business of their employees by doing all this and then top it all off. There's no recording going on. So, yeah, even if Luke Owls and Carl Anderson decide to sign with All Elite Wrestling, they've done all the recordings. The, mo- the most recent we could see them is in June or July. So they're, they're yeah. not going to make any money. And they're, they're, prob- they're probably in the same situation as all of us. They have to file unemployment. And then you have to think about what if WWE even has the heart to revoke their 90-day no-compete clause because anyone who gets fired or released from WWE has this 90-day no-compete clause for about two, three months. Yeah. You can't compete two, three months. in any mainstream Nowhere. promotion in the U.S. Nope. And that, that's something that I, I haven't heard anything about them revoking that. But if they don't, I wouldn't be surprised. I almost wanted to say it's like, because they got that stupid clause in effect. There, if it would be one thing if you asked to be terminated, then I understand that. But if it is straight out and let you go, why, why, why should I be punished? You know, for that. What, what upsets me the most is is a guy like Drake Maverick. He was promoted for weeks to be in this cruiserweight championship tournament on Two Hundred Five Live. Mm-hmm. He gets he gets released, and then in his video where he talked about being let go from WWE, he says they're still gonna have me compete in this cruiserweight tournament even though I got released like bro <laughs> bro read read between the lines bro you're, you're not what you're not getting paid if, the, if this 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 tournament just started because I'm gonna be honest I don't watch 205 live if this tournament just Neither started and they're recording right now bro it's it's a waste of time he's saying because obviously the emotions we're talking at least you, three weeks four weeks the, the emotions get to you and he was very emotional saying that there's a lot of people that like he didn't he couldn't say goodbye to after his release, people he loves, and it's like I understand that, bro. But at the same time, why would you put yourself out there? And, and th- this is the problem I have with WWE. They they put themselves as the best promotion to be out there, which is why I love an all eat wrestling being out here, because now it's like, no, dude, the grass is always greener outside of WWE. And guys like the Revival yeah. see that. Yeah. Guys like Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, people who have, Mike Kanellis and Maria Kanellis who have asked for their release. But guys like Drake Maverick, they love being at WWE. Leo Rush, No Way Jose, they, they were, they grew through the system of WWE. And now you're telling them, yeah, oh, I mean, we're, we're just going to cut you because we, and, and this is according to the Wrestling Observer, WWE said the changes will save them $4 million a month and give them a cash flow improvement of $140 million mainly from the deferral in spending on their new offices. And I believe they were supposed to open up a new office in Stamford, Connecticut to move from their current Titan Towers location. And now that mm-hmm. has to be suspended for at least six months. I mean, it's <laughs> it's unfortunate. That's all we can say to that. Like, it's an unfortunate turn of the event. And it's sad to say people, they hope no way all day who... You know, I mean, as fun as a, good as a guy he is, like, there's he's not gonna have really that AEW buzz. You know, he's not gonna have that New Japan buzz because he's not that kind of wrestler. You know, be more almost like an entertainment entertainment gimmick. You know, like he just not you know there's not a huge market for a guy like that, mm-hmm. and it sucks to see him have to be let go in these you know terms because you know. If any wrestler will be, a, you know, applying for the unemployment, he'll be one of the few. And I think as sad as it is to say, he'll probably also 
wait to see if they'll take him back when all this is over. Yeah, I'm uh, just going to finish up the quote. Uh, the release also said the company has approximately $500 million in cash and debt capacity to help them manage through the crisis. Um, and yes, last Friday, he made the decision to return to the live programming versus the tape model. Right now, the stock uh, has been unaffected by the news. It's still at $38. But I expect that to drop very soon. I'm no, I'm no stock market whiz. I'm not, you know, Fox News or MSNBC out here trying to tell you what to invest in. But I don't think that's going to be thirty dollars, thirty eight dollars very soon. I believe by weekend's end, with all this plus more news of releases of fe- coming in, I think it's going to go well below thirty dollars. I mean, I might want to chip in once this is all over, with how low the stock. That's what I'm about to say. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we should get in there, man. Maybe but we should the, get in there. <laughs> But at the same time, I mean, the call for the call Vince McMahon had with his employees, well, it was basically a hang on one second. He he had a, a whole mm-hmm. conference call and released a press press release. The conference call really lasted around five minutes, and basically that he outlined all these measures to stay afloat during the economic crisis. And one of them was the talent release. And I say this only because now Mr. Trump, our our wonderful president here in the States, has appointed Vince McMahon as the great Vince McMahon to help advise Mr. Trump on how to bring us out of this economic crisis. And looking at this, I I don't feel I don't feel too hot right now. (laughs) I mean, we also do got to remember it's kind of small in the aspect of what's really going on, but WWE UB2 does like this random like release cut. They do every year. It's usually about four or five, six and, people. And to be truthful, UG, it is around cut. this time, post WrestleMania. Yeah. Where they're like, all right, like mm-hmm. we, we know the guys that are going over. The guys that like didn't go over, we'll we'll see if they want to stick around or if they have other endeavors they want to go yeah. to. But to release over twenty wrestlers that's that's just insane i mean ec3 was just sitting there backstage he had he had no storylines and nothing aiden english went from being a wrestler to a manager to a commentator sarah logan had just come back from injury heath slater was like a fan favorite with his i got kids type storyline yeah kurt hawkins one had a had a whole storyline where he couldn't win, and then won the tag team. Ch- I mean, these guys Kinda, gave yeah. them g- gave WWE their all, and now they're out of a job. These guys guarantee you, none of maybe Mike Kyoto would be the only one that would come back, would be furloughed, and come back by WWE. But most of them, I don't see any way they come back. I mean, Rowan, Rusev, No Way Jose, Zack Ryder, Maria I mean, Kanellis, who's no. Missing, Knowing how good of a uh, person in English is, and even going back to when him and Simon Gotch, I'm not going to call him Simon Botch like everybody else on the internet does. I mean, Gotch, when they, I forgot the name of the tag teams. I'm drawing a blank on it, but I mean, they, they were NXT favorites. People love them in the NXT. You know, um, they came up and they kind of got buried right away. Um, but even you look at what, how you reinvented yourself with the whole Rusev thing, you know, like he was just a regular old. You know, manager, but super old. <laughs> you know, and then like you said, to go to a commentator, like you know, there's gonna be a wrestling job out there for the man. You just know there is, and there's even that chance now you can link back up with Simon Cox and you can go do that thing somewhere else. You know, I mean, who, who knows? Who knows? Uh, also, three other. I'm just looking now. Three other coaches have been released: uh, Ace Steel, Serena Deeb, and Kendall Kashin. They were NXT. Um, Coaches, yeah, I think, they were they were. Yeah, I think all three, all three of. I think all three of them were very. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go, go on. And, and and then you think about just just before uh, the fr- the news Friday where Vince McMahon last Friday, excuse me, uh, where Vince McMahon mm-hmm. bought, decided to go live with his live weekly tapings. One of the uh, one of the people at Titan Towers got positive tested positive for coronavirus. And it's like, of course, it's like, it's, you know, a part of you is like, oh, it's so sad. Like, wow, like this disease is serious, which is it, which it is. 
But at the same time, yeah. if you yeah. keep up with the with the business, you look at how WWE is running their things. We we had a whole discussion on the Spotify episode about Roman Reigns being immunocompromised with his leukemia that he just recovered from not that long ago, and how they were risking his health coming in when the Miz is out here coughing up a storm in the locker room. And it, it's just For those BS, kind of decisions yeah. where it's like you're not so like it's sad that someone tested positive that probably wasn't with the wrestlers, but still they tested positive. Yeah, and it's yeah. like well. Who knows who else is positive? Who else knows who, who else is asymptomatic at this point? Yeah, it's it's just a sad situation. Um, I know we keep saying it, guys, but like if if you just continue to read the quotes that George is, you know, showing you the ones that are all out there in the internet for everyone to read it anyways, you'll see that you know Vince McMahon is not looking out for what's best for his superstars, and that's. At this point in time, what matters most going to be about this man losing money due to the XFL and you know WrestleMania lows and and stuff like that. It shouldn't be about that. Obviously, people are going to document it, whatever. But a good owner won't care about that. So that's why me and George keep nailing home the fact that like, why is it continuing to? Why is it every other day there's something new coming out about the WWE doing something? You know, like, they just can't keep their names out of the storylines. They have to be in it. And I think George's take on the Spotify exclusive episode, at least the hot take saying um, about the WWE in, WWE and it's, it's coming. And if you look at how Vince McMahon is handling things and superstars vocally, vocally saying, like, hey, get me out of here. I don't want to be in this situation no more. It's top star Roman Reigns pulled out of the show not because this man said, hey, yeah, you stay home. He said, no, I'm just not showing up. You know, so not like Vince McMahon a okayed it. He said, I'm not coming in. And Vince McMahon, I'm not going to let Roman Reigns go. I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, so. so um, and, and, and just yeah, one just, last thing that, that, I, that I saw. Uh, the XFL apparently is now being put up for sale. So... I know yeah, the Spotify episode, we, we I talked about how billionaires like Gary V and maybe Dave Portnoy want to get into the spring football game, or the, excuse me, the XFL episode, want to get into the spring football mm-hmm. game. I mean, the XFL is now being sold so WWE can earn a profit and quote unquote survive during this economic crisis. But when you line things up and you say, okay, well, you already have the president in your pocket. You got. You already have the governor of Florida in your pocket. You pretty much got the AOK to continue your live show, like your live tapings. So you already have the networks in your pocket. Where's the Where's the financial crisis? Where 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 are you, Where How are you suffering from the economic crisis? It's not like you're you're out. Vince McMahon is out there with no no television, no content. I mean, Disney is out here begging for content right now. And they even had the they even had the smart idea to cancel Dana White and his UFC fight, even though Dana White said I'll, I'll have it in a private island. I don't care. And Disney was yeah. like, "No, you're not doing any of that because we care I mean, about that, the safety no. of people, and we're, we're not going to let you do that." And ESPN would love to have UFC right now. I guarantee you, they would love to have UFC. But it's a any, it's any about business. the greater good. And. That's why that's, I think that WWE right now, it's the hot take, the hottest hot take I'll have. I don't, I don't think anyone else, I, at least I've seen on Twitter, YouTube, anywhere, has said this. But I'll stick to it, and we'll come back if it actually happens. WWE is on the decline, and it will. And I think this is the beginning of the end. And by this time next year, WWE might might be looking at. Filing some bankruptcy themselves because this coronavirus isn't going away anytime soon. I agree. I, I, as crazy as the take as it is. And I'm in the process. And I'm in the process of, of, of moving to a new home. <laughs> and I already know this, yes, you this thing. And I already know this thing isn't uh, isn't going away soon. So it's already affecting me. It, it, it's affecting all of us. Everyone except WWE, it seems. Apparently, apparently. But you two, tell us what you think.
how do you feel about the Please. releases going on? Do you still love Vince McMahon? Yes or no? We'll put a poll just, just for the hell of it. <laughs> I'll vote no. I'll, I'll go ahead and <laughs> <laughs> but please comment, subscribe. Well, uh, off the bench. Well, follow us on Facebook at Off the Bench Pod. Uh, thanks for joining. I mean, I'm out of breath. Just ranting. About <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he worked himself up over there. I'm making sure I keep myself cool. I worked, worked up a sweat for this at home workout of just yelling at WWE. <laughs> we gotta get our workout somehow, man. Uh, but again, thanks, thanks to the listeners. Subscribe for more. Listen, follow us on Spotify at Off the Bench. Uh, Facebook at Off the Bench Pod. Thank you again to our sponsors, Diplomacy Clothing. Make sure you get one of their face masks. Mine is being delivered this weekend. Thank you to my boy Kyle Miller for creating those face masks in this time of need. Definitely, if you're going to invest, invest in Diplomacy Clothing. <laughs> for well, sure. Might as well. They got our backs <laughs> in this coronavirus, unlike Vince McMahon. Drivers. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's follow our actual sponsors, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this has been it for me and Roland. Jorge, signing out.